Well, we're here at Emory University and you're preparing to give a speech. Um, why don't you give us a little brief synopsis? Your speech is entitled, The EU as a Rising Superpower. Uh, why don't you tell us what you mean by that in a, in a few words? Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue that we Europeans maybe oftentimes do not give so much focus here in the U.S. because we're here as individual states, Danish ambassador, Swedish ambassador, many European countries. But what is happening in Europe these decades is, I think, really uh, important also for the United States businesses and citizens to understand, and certainly students at an uh, advanced university like Emory should know that European Union, as we call it, not the European United States, but the European Union is trying to be a growing superpower on the world scene. And we are actually not 50 states like here in the United States, but we are 27 states now after 50 years of cooperation, trying to learn from all the mistakes we have had and made in Europe, making all the wars. And mm -hmm. it seems that we are, with this type of cooperation, really avoiding wars and conflicts and making a new type of cooperation that will unite Europe, East and West, after the end of the Cold War, but also produce some of the scales of economies that European companies will benefit from. Mm -hmm. If you have one big market, almost 500 million citizens, which is the case of these EU uh, 27 member states cooperation, you really have some economies of scale going that will make companies grow much bigger. Mm -hmm. When you have uh, a common European currency, the euro, that is competing with the yen and the dollar, you, have a, you don't have a reserve value, uh, currency, but you have a sort of value in that uh, strong, at the present times, uh, euro. That, that, that many sovereign wealth funds, many countries will put their, their, their uh, currencies in. And, and we, we get easier, uh, I think, trade within Europe because of that one common currency. Many other features I will go in detail with, mm -hmm. common defense, uh, common policies in the agriculture, trade policies, a common policy of the EU. So we act as an entity, EU, that is vis-a-vis the uh, United States, but also vis-a-vis -vis Canada or EU vis-a-vis -vis China and Russia. And I think that it's fair to say that Europe needs this close cooperation mm. in order to better compete with the United States, India, China, Japan, Russia, Brazil in the future. Mm -hmm. Is there any fear from, uh, say, smaller countries like Denmark that increasing uh, integration will lead to um, a sacrifice of national sovereignty. In, in the case of, say, the financial crisis, um, how has Denmark fared in that, and how is how is that fit into this um, this fear of of uh, the sacrifice of sovereignty? It's true that that when you do this type of very close cooperation between thousand-year-old states like my own kingdom of Denmark, with other European states and powers, some of our former adversaries. Then there is this pooling of sovereignty, this strong cooperation that, to some extent, limits the national uh, political uh, operability. You do reduce your national symbols as well, mm -hmm. but you pool your sovereignty, and in a way, you gain more than you lose. And I think that's the the the, the, the understanding by many European citizens and countries that that by sharing our sovereignty, by adding it together, by pooling it we actually can easily uh, be of, 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 of uh, real uh, uh, value and importance on the, on the world scene. Mm -hmm. But we can also grow our countries stronger and better uh, in our member states. So the, the advantages of, of, of taking away all the customs between ourselves, all the trade barriers between many European countries is, have, have really given us a growth and a wealth and an affluence in Europe that we couldn't have gotten as easy uh, with all these uh, hindrances. Mm -hmm. So th making this uh, European Union, for example, without passport control, you facilitate people's transport between the different European mm -hmm. states like you do here in the United States. Nobody would dream of presenting a passport or having customs and passport control between the different states. Mm -hmm. it, would, it would hamper uh, circulation for, 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 for persons, uh, transport for, for goods and services. So it, it is really important for us Europeans to realize how much we can gain through this cooperation. But you're right, there are limits to how much sovereignty we can share and how easy that is going. Most Americans probably know that we are trying to produce a new treaty for the cooperation inside the European Union these uh, years, so-called Lisbon Treaty. And I think 
uh, almost all of the 27 countries have ratified and approved this treaty, but one country, Ireland, unfortunately did not have the success at their referendum to approve this treaty they needed, so they rejected the treaty. So as of now, we are in a, a, um, a, a little bit difficult situation because we all need to ratify this treaty before it can enter into force and be valid for all of us. And so it's really democracy at works. Ireland is a, a good uh, European country. We Danes love the Irish because they joined the European Union with the United Kingdom and Denmark in 72, and we really uh, have great sympathy with a, another small country uh, that has come a long way in their economic political development inside the European Union. But we also have to accept that, that they have their political processes, mm -hmm. and, and, and unfortunately, a majority of their citizens wanted to reject that new treaty. We have it already approved in our parliament, and we are, we are grateful for that. But we have to find a solution for the Irish uh, citizens and, and the Irish state so that the European Union, hopefully, rather sooner than later, can proceed with its integration and, and tying Europe uh, closer together. Your question about the financial crisis, I think, is also very important. We Europeans have, I think, brought about quite a lot of regulation, mm -hmm. maybe more than here in the US in general. Uh, but we also must realize that, that these interdependencies in the global financial markets are so high and, and intense that we are suffering some of the same problems and challenges in having outbacks being more solvent and coming back on track and being able to deliver more, more credit to each other and to, to the society. So we are, for a period of time, in a very difficult downturn economically, and we need to find new and better ways in the European Union, in the member states, and probably also look at how the international architecture mm -hmm. probably can be looked at and possibly remedied, improved, in order to, to be more conducive in the future to, to global economic growth.